Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for April 11th. April 11th is the 101st day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 102nd in leap years, with 264 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is honky tonk. <laughs> Honky tonk can be a noun or an adjective and refers to a bar or tavern that plays or provides country music for the entertainment of its patrons. Honky tonk also refers to the style of music played in such establishments or a particular type of piano made or adapted to alter the sound produced by the piano. Honky tonk bars, music, and related practices and people were initially more common in the South and Southwest. We've mentioned before several singers, songwriters, and musicians whose music careers got off the ground playing in honky-tonks. Just the other day, we talked about Carl Perkins and Leon Russell a few days before that. It feels like the term honky-tonk was initially used as a derogatory term, but has come around to a less unfavorable, more affectionate feel. <laughs> So many eminent country music artists like Jimmy Rogers, Ernest Tubb, Lefty Frizzell, Hank Williams, Loretta Lynn, Patsy Cline, Johnny Horton, and Merle Haggard, just to name a few, began their careers as amateur musicians in honky-tonks. Honky-tonk was initially used as a term for a dive bar or a cheap nightclub. The term can be seen in newspaper articles, primarily in Texas and Oklahoma beginning in 1893, where the term was used to describe such places. By 1921, honky-tonk was used to refer to a type of music that would be played in such a place. And remember, while electricity might have been a thing by then, and coin-operated record machines might have existed in the early 1900s, in the beginning, music played in a honky-tonk would have been performed live. The exact origin of this term is unknown, but it was likely onomatopoeic based on the sorts of sounds one might hear in a honky-tonk bar or performed in honky-tonk music. <laughs> honky-tonk was requested by YouTube viewer D. Dally at ddally8851. Thanks, D. Dally. And if you have a word you'd like us to look at in this Word of the Day segment, drop it in the comments. We will take a look at it. <laughs> And with that, this is the birthday of English surgeon, apothecary, geologist, and paleontologist, and political activist James Parkinson, born April 11, 1755. His interests transitioned from medicine to paleontology and geology, and he authored a good number of papers on various subjects, one being a document called An Essay on the Shaking Palsy in 1817 about a shaking disorder that later came to be called Parkinson's disease, named after him. In addition to Parkinson's, there are other tremor disorders, such as essential tremors, and Dr. Parkinson did distinguish between resting tremors and tremors with motion. The holidays and observances section for April 11th mentions World Parkinson's Day, but when you click that link, it simply takes you to the biography page about James Parkinson. So that tells me that World Parkinson's Day is meant to recognize and honor the observations of James Parkinson. He lived to the age of 69. This year, we're paying particular attention to the states and territories of the United States. And on April 11, 1899, Spain handed Guam over to the United States, according to the 1898 Treaty of Paris. Guam is an unincorporated and unorganized U.S. territory located in the Pacific Ocean, about 6,000 miles, 9,700 kilometers, from the U.S. mainland. Guam is the largest and southernmost of the Mariana Islands, which are an archipelago, but Guam is a single island. Guam's capital city is Hegatnia. Hegatnia. Guam's tropical climate, beautiful beaches, and nature are very attractive to visitors and favorable to tourism. At just over 30 miles, or about 48 and a half kilometers long, and ranging from 4 to 12 miles wide, that would be 6 to 19 kilometers wide, Guam has an area 
of 212 square miles, or 549 square kilometers, and it is the 32nd largest island of the United States. The southern end of the island is pretty rugged, so most of the activity in southern Guam will be along the coast. Most folks live and work in the central and northern regions of the island. Guam has two U.S. military bases, Naval Base Guam and Anderson Air Force Base. In addition, Guam has the Guam Army National Guard. As a U.S. territory, Guam is part of the U.S. postal system with a postal abbreviation of GU and zip codes from 96910 to 96932. U.S. postal mail to Guam is considered domestic, so it's just like mailing anything across town or from one state to another, although things might take a little bit longer to get there. Now, the private shipping companies like FedEx, UPS, DHL, they do not regard Guam as domestic, so shipping by one of those will probably cost more. Being a remote location, most things do have to be shipped in. And being a U.S. territory, passengers arriving directly from the U.S. can skip immigration and go directly to Guam's customs and quarantine. Guam has a university and a community college, Guam gets to send a delegate to Congress who can participate in discussions and debates but not vote on the floor of the House. Guam's nickname is Land of the Chamorro. The name Guam is adapted from a Chamorro word that means we have or ours. The Chamorros are the Austronesian indigenous people of the Mariana Islands, including Guam. Generally speaking, though, people from Guam are called Guamanians. Guam's two distinct seasons are the wet season and the dry season. Dry season is January to May, transitioning in June to the wet season, which runs from July to November. Guam does lie in the path of typhoons, which are most likely to arrive from August through November. Guam's beautiful and delicate ocean reefs are a popular vacation spot for scuba divers. Guam. We mentioned the Treaty of Paris when we talked about Guam, and on April 11, 1899, the Treaty of Paris also allowed the U.S. to acquire Puerto Rico as U.S. territory. Officially known as the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the name Puerto Rico means rich port, and its nickname is the Island of Enchantment. Puerto Rico's capital is San Juan, and as with all U.S. territories, Puerto Rico may send a delegate to U.S. Congress, and that delegate may participate in discussion and debate, but is not allowed to vote on the floor of the House. People who live in or are from Puerto Rico are called Puerto Ricans. Their postal abbreviation is PR, and as with Guam, Puerto Rico is part of the U.S. postal system, so postal mail is considered domestic, just like the package your grandma sends you from Tulsa or the letter you send to your friend in Cooperstown. By the way, when Puerto Ricans visit the mainland, they are not foreigners. They're not required to carry a passport. Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. Puerto Rico consists of a main island with several smaller islands for a land area of about 3,424 square miles or 8,868 square kilometers. The capital is San Juan. Militarily, as far as I know, there's a small U.S. Army base, Fort Buchanan, Puerto Rico Air National Guard Base, U.S. Coast Guard, and Puerto Rico National Guard facilities. Puerto Rico's climate is mostly tropical rainforest and, like Guam, has a rainy season and a dry season. The rainy season runs from April to November and the dry season from December to March. Hurricanes have been hard on Puerto Rico in every way. Puerto Rico certainly looks like a beautiful and interesting place, though. Puerto Rico. A couple years ago, I talked about the writer Kurt Vonnegut. What an interesting character. I'll leave a link to that episode in case you'd like to check it out. Today's song is Let It Be by the Beatles, written by Paul McCartney and credited to the Lennon-McCartney Partnership. The single version of this song was released in March of 1970. Let It Be is also the title track on an album of the same name, but the versions are slightly different from each other. 
Inspiration for this song came from a dream that Paul had while the band was going through difficult times, which ultimately led to their breakup. In this dream, his late mother, Mary Patricia McCartney, came to visit with him. And in some tellings, he says that in the dream, she told him, it'll be all right, just let it be. This gives me goosebumps. When people have asked him if Mother Mary in the song refers to Mary, the mother of Jesus, Paul McCartney typically replies that listeners are free to interpret the song as they wish. Let It Be by the Beatles hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 on April 11, 1970, where it remained for two weeks. Let It Be by the Beatles. Link in the description. All righty. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page. It's called No Really. <laughs> You can also find me on Rumble, a bit shoot, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. This is the birthday. I didn't get that. Could you try again? I wasn't talking to you. And from the Life is What Happens When You Make Other Plans department. <laughs> oh, where's your microphone? Oh, get your microphone. <laughs> what is it with you and this microphone? Okay, here we go. Maybe we could get a little camera back up there again. Right there. Little bitty tiny camera. Make it small. Right there. <laughs> You're here with me live this morning as I stumble through. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. My my apologies here. I thought I had it all ready to go, and I just didn't. I guess so. I thought I was ready to go, and my apologies for the for the hiccups and the baubles. <laughs> See, that's all stuff that gets edited out in the edited versions. <laughs> well, I have a lot to edit today. Cacophony is a sound. <laughs> Cacophony is a noun that you got to read it the right way. Don't alienate people who can be helpful to you. Flinging happiness all over the place. All right. Back to work. I think we got it this time. <laughs>